Good evening. Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. There we go. Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. OPC, show our visitors how much we love and appreciate them being in the house of the Lord with us tonight. We welcome you. We hope you feel at home worshiping and praising the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords with us tonight. Hallelujah. A few announcements before we get started. Well, quite a few or quite a lot of announcements. Tomorrow night, Women on a Mission at 6.30. And then Friday night again, Women on a Mission will be at Sister Chris's house at 6.30. There will be a youth car wash this Saturday from 10 to 2 right here at the church. So if you want to come by and make the youth work, you can come by and bring your dirty car. Make sure you go mud riding and stuff before you go. And then on a white road when you bring it in. And then as soon as you get here, go down a gumbo road and then bring it in here and ask them to wash it. <clears throat> and then sit there and smile. That would be fun. I think I'm going to try that. Anyway, they'll be washing cars from 10 to 2. Uh, we're going to also be celebrating Willow's fourth birthday this Saturday at 1 p.m. If you want to be a part of that, I believe it'll be in the fellowship hall. I don't know where Sister Naomi's at. She's normally sitting back in her. She's not here tonight. Will's drinking can on this one. <clears throat> so there'll be a birthday party Saturday and then back here Sunday at 11 for Sunday school and then 6.30 Sunday night and still... Brother Wilson? And still, Brother Wilson will be with us Sunday morning and Sunday night, both services. So we'll be looking for a great time with Brother Andy Wilson. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lifelong friend, looking forward to having a great time and service with them. Um, that being said, that's all the announcements. If you could stand at this time. Do have a... A praise report, my brother-in-law was able to come home, um, still, still, you know, not 100%, but he is back home, continue to pray for him. I believe Sister Tammy is having a procedure or a surgery tomorrow, remember her in your prayers. Sister Renee's mom, uh, Sister Delaney, continue to remember him. Uh, brother Bo Harris still in the hospital, very, very sick, can remember that wonderful elder in your prayers. All of our elders, if you have a need in the house. Could you signify it by the lifting of your hand? Hallelujah. If you need prayer, we ask that you come forward so we can pray the prayer of faith over you and with you, knowing and believing you're going to leave here changed. We want the Lord to have his way in this service tonight. Amen? Amen. So if you believe that and you want that with us, can you lift your hands, stretch them as far towards heaven as you can, lift your voices, and let's call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, we thank you, we praise you, we worship you. Thank you for bringing us back into your house tonight. Thank you for your safekeeping that you put upon us. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you move and keep your hand upon Sister Tammy tomorrow. Continue to work in Alan's life, Sister Delaney, and move and touch Brother Bo Harris. Lord, and all the needs that's in this house tonight, we ask, Lord, by the power of your name, the authority of your word, that you move, that you touch, that you heal, that you deliver. Mighty Lord Jesus, and you have your will and have your way. Lord, touch each and every aspect of this this service, the singing, the instrument playing, the teachers in the back, the ministering tonight. Lord, have your will, have your way as we put our hands together in a hand clap of praise and we lift our voices and try up tonight singing hallelujah, 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 hallelujah.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's put our hands together. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, mighty God. We worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you for your worship. You can worship your way back to your seats if you'd like. We want our ushers to come take up our offering.
Lord, we thank you for taking care of us. We thank you for providing for us. We ask, Lord, that you bless this offering tonight. We ask that you bless it for your kingdom and that you bless it for your glory. Lord, and that you bless the ones that have and the ones that have not, Lord. Lord, and we give you the praise and we give you the honor for it. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church say, Amen. As they transition, continue or remember the announcements. Looking forward to a great time in that. I'm going to let them take up the announcements and then we'll dismiss our classes. Take up the announcements. Ah! Well, take up the announcements and then I'll give you the offering. <clears throat> but you can't laugh at yourself. It ain't no good, is it? Right. Hallelujah. At this time, all of our classes can be dismissed. Back to have a great time back in the back. We miss you already. Stay, young men stay out, Pastor said. All the young men stay out. Praise the Lord, everybody. Nobody like Jesus. I'm glad I know him. Don't you? Here, G, Dad, if you don't mind. I've had many tears of sorrow. I've had questions for tomorrow. There have been times I didn't know right from wrong. But in every situation, God gave me blessed consolation. He only gave me trials to make me strong. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend upon His Word. Oh, through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend upon His Word. I've been a lot of places, seen a lot of faces. There have been times I felt so alone. But in that lonely hour, that precious lonely hour, is when he let me know that I was his own. Oh, through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend upon His Word. So I thank God for the mountains, thank Him for the valley, thank Him for the storms He's brought me through. Cause if I never had a problem, I wouldn't know that God could solve them. I wouldn't know what faith in God could do. Oh, through it all, through it all, hallelujah, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, 
I've learned to depend upon his word. Oh, I thank God for every mountain. Thank him for every valley. Thank him for the storms he's brought me through. Because if I never had a problem, I wouldn't know that God could solve them. I wouldn't know what faith in God could do. So I thank him for the mountains, and I thank him for every valley. I thank him for the storms he's brought me through. Because if I never had a problem, I wouldn't know that God could solve them. I wouldn't know what faith in God could do. Oh, through it all. Through it all. I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, I've learned to depend upon His Word. Yeah, I thank Him for the mountains. Thank Him for the valleys. Thank Him for the storms He's brought me through. Because if I never had a problem, wouldn't know that God could solve them. Wouldn't know what faith in God could do. Through it all, help me sing. Through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. I'm going to sing that verse again, Exodus 14 and verse 1. So I thank God for the mountains, and I thank Him for the valleys. I thank Him for the storms He's brought me through. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Because if I never had a problem, I wouldn't know that God could solve them. wouldn't know what faith. God to do. Hey, I thank him for the mountain high. Thank him for the old valley low. Thank him for every, every storm he brought me through. Because if I never had a problem, I wouldn't know that God could solve it. I wouldn't know what faith in God can do help me sing that chorus through it all through it all through it all I've learned to trust in Jesus I've learned to trust in God oh through it all hey through it all I've learned to depend upon it Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand. Grab a praise. One prayer request we, I don't think we said anything about. Sister Tammy has been in the hospital for the last few days, and uh, we need to be in prayer for her tomorrow. I believe she's going to have, uh, be able to have her surgery, and uh, and, and we're thankful for that. Uh, they, they went through a lot to get that, and, uh, and so I thank God for that. So be in prayer for her tomorrow, that God would be with her, and I believe that he will. I know that he will. Amen. Exodus 14, verse 1. So good to see everybody here tonight. Um, I appreciate the young men staying out with me. I did not uh, have time to, actually had time, just slip my mind about who to get uh, back there to keep the young men. And so uh, they're just going to hang out with me here. Amen. 
but I need their help anyway. So I'll try to be young tonight. I thank God for our classes, for our teenagers and all of them. I'm telling you, anybody that gives themselves to that, I'm very thankful for. And, and I want to be careful who you put back there, you know. And uh, I just don't want to do things on a whim. And I drop the ball sometimes. I should I do better, maybe. I don't know. Exodus 14 and verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they turn and encamp before Pihira. Y'all say it better? Go ahead. Hi ha hi ra. Hmm. I'm not going to do it again. Between Migdal and the sea, and against Bel Zephon, before it shall ye encamp by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land. Everybody say entangled in the land. The wilderness have shut them in. I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow after them, and I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his host. The Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. They did so. As if they didn't know by now, God was still proving himself to Pharaoh. It's amazing how he's been through all this stuff. And he's still having to say, Hello, I'm still the Lord. He did. So I'm thankful we got a God like that. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Help me do a good job. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said, Amen. You can be seated. I want to preach to you from this thought the place where sedge grows. The place where sedge grows. Sedge. A particular type of grass that has strong leaves or stems for weaving household items such as baskets and mats. Construction that is in the construction of boats and houses is for thatching, fencing, rope making. Some species are used for in perfumery, potpourri, potpourri, and several species for their medicinal properties. Some of them have been used besides the highways and the byways to prevent erosion. With that said, just hang on to that for a moment. I'm going to talk to you from that title, The Place Where Sedge Grows. And there's a method to the madness. Because I do believe that in this hour that we live in, we are dealing with uh, chaos and uh, battle and just a warfare, probably more of the mind than anything. And uh, you have to hang on to songs and then just setting up this target real quick. Like what? We just sung a moment ago. Thank God for the mountains. Thank God for the valley. Thank God for every storm he brought me through. Because if I didn't have any of them, I, if I didn't have them problems, I wouldn't know that God could solve them. And I wouldn't know what faith in God could do. The children of Israel were a people of promise. They had lived in Goshen for some time now, and it was finally going to happen. They're going 
to the promised land. They're going to the place that flows with milk and honey. And it's what they have been picturing and envisioning for years. Everybody say years. Decades. Centuries. A long, long time. Abraham has a promise. Then you move on to where uh, Jacob and his boys are in Egypt and Joseph is ruler. But Joseph says to his people, when you leave Egypt, you take my bones with you. Somewhere, maybe in a dark room somewhere. There's an old coffin where Joseph is dead and gone. But the bones are still there. Every time somebody moving around, going through valuables, maybe looking through the storage, what they're going to take to the promised land bumps into that old buyer, that old coffin. Here's the rattle of the bones and remembers the prophecy. We are in Egypt, but we are not of Egypt. And when you leave this place, the story goes, you take my bones, these bones, these are Joseph's bones, you take them with you. Inspiration were in those bones. Vision was in those bones. A word was in those bones. And they hung on to it. Amen. And they did not want to lose sight of the fact that they're not going to be in slavery forever. They're not going to be brick makers forever. They're not going to be in Egypt forever. They're going to leave this place behind them. Oh, years and years rock on and the children of Israel grow stronger and stronger and they multiply and the affliction of the taskmaster is greater and greater and greater. And the Bible says that the more that Pharaoh afflicted them, the more the Israelites multiplied and grew. Uh, a little nervous now, Pharaoh is, realizing that he's getting outnumbered, and says, oh, we're going to kill all of the male children. All of the young male children, we're, we're going to kill them. And we're not going to, uh, we're not going to put ourselves in a place that God would raise up somebody that would bring them out of Egypt. Well, you know how they're longing to leave this place. You're not going to keep all of these people, amen, bound here. One of these days, they're going to make up their mind. They're leaving here. They're hanging on to a promise that was given them a long time ago. And Pharaoh knows that God's going to raise up somebody. And he's not just going to raise up anybody. He's going to raise up of the seed of Abraham, amen, of the seed of promise, somebody that's willing to do. Amen. What God says to do. Praise God. And, and, uh, and so he realizes that he's going to have to get these babies when they're young. But you know the story of how that Moses' mother takes and puts together an ark. And puts that Moses out into those reeds. And, and, uh, and here comes Pharaoh's daughter and looks out across there and, and, uh, and takes that baby home. And, and uh, not only taking the baby home, but, but allowing uh, Moses' mom to nurse that baby. And not only allowing Moses' mom to nurse the baby, but paying her to do it. Amen. And, uh, and so Moses grows. One thing that I like about Moses is, by faith, Moses. Refusing 
to be an Egyptian or called an Egyptian. Chose rather to suffer affliction and persecution than to enjoy the pleasure of royalty. It was probably because there was a mama that was there that kept telling him, Now I know you're dining among Pharaoh's entourage, and I know you're in five star rooms, and I know you're taken good care of, but I want you to know, Moses, you're not an Egyptian. You're a Hebrew boy. And drilled into his mind, Hear, O Israel, the Lord, our God is one. Don't you get satisfied in that palace, Moses. Don't you get used to the fineries, if you will, of Egypt, Moses. We're going to leave here, and I don't know when, and I don't know how. But I want you to know it's been told for years. And there's some reason that God saved you among all of those young boys. chose you among all those young boys. It, you just might be the one, Moses. Later on in his life, and I'm just going to fast forward ahead, you know the story. Later on in his life, he finds himself in Goshen, and he is now leading Israel. He has Aaron on his side, and he's dealing with Pharaoh. And this little boy that's now grown up is saying to Pharaoh, the highest man in that then known part of the world, let my people go. Let you know that he never lost sight of the fact of who he was when he looked at Pharaoh and he said, let my people go immediately. Pharaoh knew he ain't talking about Egyptians. He's talking about Israelites. He's talking about the Hebrews. Let my people go. Turn them loose. Amen. The, 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 uh, the plagues begin to come. The dust that breaks forth and turns to boil. However, those that lived in Goshen... Didn't have to deal with it. God knows how to protect his people in this world. Some of you ready to get out with a rapture and all of a sudden just boom, we leave in here and not have to deal with any kind of tribulation. But let me tell you something. What if God just keeps us in the middle of the world in Goshen and says while it happens to everybody else, I got a people who have been able to tell the difference between the holy and the profane. Yeah, might as well not be scared of tribulation. Don't be scared of it. It's either you're going to go through it or you're not. But I know this. If God be for us, who can be against us? I've got, I've got uh, uh, you know, Scripture after Scripture that proves that no weapon formed against us. God's going to take care of us. No weapon formed against us shall be able to. We know that all things work together for the good to them that are called according to His purpose. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against the enemy. Amen. He's a very present help in the time of trouble. I'm glad to know that i got a God who stands beside me every day. Praise the Lord. D David said, I once was young, now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor seed begging for bread. Amen. You know what he was saying? He said, as long as I've lived, all I can say is it's a blessing to serve the Lord. God's already always taken care of me. Amen. So does that mean I go through low times or not? Yeah, we go through some low times. But though he slay me, yet will I trust him. The end of the thing is going to be greater than the beginning of the thing. God's going to keep his hand on us. God's going to procure us. God's going to take care of us. So we don't have to be afraid. So we don't have to be afraid. And so, and so there they are in Goshen. All of a sudden, it's time for him to prophesy to the he heavens, speak to the heavens. Hailstones are going to begin to fall. Amen. It's going to crush their cattle. But it's not going to crush the Israelites' cattle. Because they were in a protected place. Everybody say Goshen. 
But there comes a time in order to get across to the promised land. You've got to be willing to leave Goshen. I know you got it made and God's got you protected and you're all heads in. And while Egypt is falling apart, the church is sustained and okay. But, but we got to get across and we got to get to the promised land. I'm not, Goshen is still in Egypt. And I'm not going to stay in this world. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. I'm not staying here. So you've got to be willing to step out of a comfort zone. And when he steps out of the comfort zone, amen, the Bible lets us know that the Egyptians marched after them. The Bible said that when the Israelites realized that Pharaoh and his army was marching after them, they were sore afraid because what the hailstones couldn't do and what the locusts couldn't do and what, amen, the lice couldn't do and what the blood couldn't do, now Pharaoh has taken it into his own hands. And it would seem now that Pharaoh is going to have his way with these slaves with these Israelites and as they look back over their shoulder they seen the enemy draw nigh and they were afraid then they cried unto the Lord the Bible said that the pillar of fire that led them at night and the cloud that led them by day removed and went behind them and stood between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of God's people. The Bible said that it was, it gave light by night to these, and it was darkness to the Egyptians, so that the one came not near the other all the night. Brother, I'm going to tell you something. You need to find out whose side you're on. You need to be careful that you're not caught up in the cloud and caught up in the fire. You need to be on one side or the other. Hallelujah. And, uh, and so this is transpiring and this is taking place. And they're outside of Goshen and they're realizing that God is going to take care of them. That God is taking care of them. You find yourself in Exodus chapter 14. I'm going to try to hurry here, but... Uh, Exodus chapter 14, you find where that the Lord uh, began to speak to Moses. And he, said, he spoke unto the children of Israel that they turn and encamp before Pi-ha-haroth. I'd probably mess up. So it's just ha 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 Y'all getting that? Can anybody say pa ha 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 Got a good teacher. So you two taught me that. But don't even say it wasn't right, Dad. You two know. I Google. Two talk to me. Well, that's your mess up. I'm just kidding. Hi, ha, hurrah. The place of the sedge. Not the sledge. The sedge. The sedge, a plant. Big whoop. I know in, in my heart that while God was getting Pharaoh's attention and hardening his heart and showing Pharaoh that he was Lord, there was something else that was going on that day. Because when he turned all of them people of God toward this city, the place where sedge grows. 
he was making a statement to Israel. Before you cross over, I want you to know something. That you need the kind of environment that won't allow compromise. That won't allow erosion. That won't allow a wash away. You need the kind of ecology. Can I say it like that? Ecosystem, maybe. That that you can you can plant and you can build, if you will, fences. And you can build if you need to boats. And you can build. If you need two ropes. Oh, hallelujah. Well, let's just take, let's just pause here for a minute. What, what, what do we need ropes for? If I remember right, you're going to find a place in Jericho just not too far down the road. Where there's some folks that's going to be let down out of a window. By an old scarlet thread. By no rope. I don't know. It might have been made by sedge. I don't know. All I know is they made ropes by. But more than, and you can preach that sometime if you want, but more than any of that, he stopped him by there because he wanted to remind Moses that he is the great I am who is Alpha and Omega, who is beginning What are you trying to say? And the ending. He wanted to stop him long enough to look at a city, a place where sedge grows. To remind him that if God ever protected him before and the children of Israel and procured him to use him for this hour, then God's going to continue to do that. Why are you saying that? Because the ark that was built by his mama was built by the very sedge that they encamped around. He said, before we ever cross over, you're fixing to see Pharaoh get closer than he's ever been. You're fixing to see the enemy of your past Close in closer than it's ever been. But I want you to know you've been through enough to know that I'm going to be enough for you. I want you to know that if I protected you in the sedge, uh, hallelujah, among the crocodiles, among the, that busy river, among the Egyptians, then I want you to know you may be looking at a Red Sea that is much bigger than the Nile. But I want you to understand that I am still God. And if I protected you in the beginning, I will protect you in the end. Because I am God and I change not. Now don't be dismayed when you look at this Red Sea and you don't have a boat. And you look at this Red Sea, and it seems like you're out of control. Son, if I can use your mama to build an ark, then I'm fixing to use you, boy. And you ain't going to have a boat. You ain't going to have a cruise liner. All you're going to have is a, is a staff in your hand. But it's going to be enough to take you and the children of Israel to the other side. So what I've come to teach, preach, preach, whatever I can do tonight is that we need to take pause at the place where sedge grows. We need to take a moment and just look and meditate, if you will, take in every time that God's ever healed you. Oh, I know you're facing a battle right now, but every time God gave you victory. And just go ahead 
here, and here, and let me tell you, when the Bible said that Pharaoh's going to look at them and say they are entangled, he said, he said that they are perplexed. That's what he was saying. The, the children of Israel now are stopped. They're between the Red Sea. They're not in Goshen anymore. They haven't got any protection. And now they are perplexed. Now they are entangled. Everybody all right? Now they are confused. But God is not the author of confusion. What God has started, God will finish it. I said, <laughs> I said God will finish it. And so while Pharaoh thought they were perplexed, they just were simply taking pause to realize that if God ever did it before, then God can do it again. That means something to me. That means something to me. Know what it is for God to heal my back. Know what it is for God to heal my mind. Not once, but more than once. God's done it. So when I'm tormenting my mind, and the enemy comes in, I've just got to take pause at the place of the setting. Say, I remember when I couldn't have done it by myself. There was no way I was going to make it. But God made a way. So I've just come to remind you. You might be up against it right now. Some look back over their shoulder and they see an Egyptian army coming in. And others just pause and they stop and say, I know it's terrifying. Old saying, God will make a way. I say, God will make a way. Everybody may not, everybody may not know about it. Every, they've heard the story, but they they may not know the details about it. But the leadership looks and says, "Oh, oh yeah, I understand." Wonder why I preach miracles and what God's done for us so much. I need to just hang on just for a minute and look. Huh? And say, through it all, through it all, would you stand to your feet? I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend on His Word. Been a lot of places. Seen a lot of faces. Been times I didn't know right from wrong. Every situation. But in every situation, what are you doing? I, I'm looking at where the sedge grows. In every situation. <laughs> in other words, there's more where that came from, son. That ain't the last ark I got. That ain't the last miracle I've got. That ain't the last way I've made. It's not over for you. It's not over for you. I'm getting ready to do more, more, more. Anybody believe that God's able to do exceeding, abundant, above all? Huh? That wasn't the last sedge tree, Moses. That wasn't the last sedge tree. <laughs> that wasn't my last miracle. We're going to make baskets in the New Testament. And there's going to be 12 baskets of overflow. Come on. <laughs> there's miracles on the way. You got to believe it with everything that you got. I said, you got to believe it with everything that you got. It's not over. God's not done with me. God's not through with me. God's getting ready to take. And he just took one out back then, but he's getting ready to take a million out in just a little bit. Come on. Come on. God's, God's going to do something bigger. I said, God's going to do something bigger. Whatever you need him to do, he's able. I like how God takes things that you never would. You never would. 
expect him to use. And he said, this is how I'm going to do it. Rod, come on. Out of the cloud comes manna one day. Out of a rock comes water. They found water that was bitter. They just threw a tree in it. I wonder if it was an old sad tree. I don't know. Really don't matter. It's just a, it's just proof that God can do it again, again, and again. So be encouraged, young man. Be encouraged, woman, let him take calls at the sad tree while the enemy thinks you're confused. The rea- reality is, is that you're refueling your faith. They that wait upon the Lord. Hey, Pharaoh's getting ready to know that he is the Lord. Your problem's getting ready to know that he is the Lord. Uh, I know it's closing in on you right now, but they're getting ready to know. Right here around the old sedge bush. Come on. Hallelujah. Right here around the old sedge bush. He is the Lord. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Know that you're not by yourself. God's not forgotten how to work. Even when you you yourself, like Moses in the beginning, he couldn't have done it by himself. His mama had to do it for him. When, when, you, when you don't have any way, you're innocent in the situation. Anybody ever been innocent in the situation? You're innocent in it, and you don't have any way to do it. You don't know how to fix it. It's just coming at you, and it's just beating you down. And the, 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 you're innocent in it. God's saying, look, I, I know how to take care of it. Just like I did before, Moses. When you can't do it for yourself, God can. Boy, if we had Jordan and them here, I'd have them going, you made a way. When my back was against the wall, looked like it was over. If you believe God's going to make a way, I want you to just raise your hands and Hey, Paul-in-law just got out of the hospital. Look at him tonight. I'm thankful that the Lord's touched him. Go ahead. Thank you, Sister Elizabeth. Go ahead. Move by faith right now. Just come on around to the old sedge for a moment. Encamp around the old sedge for a moment. Encamp around the old sedge for a moment. The place where sedge grows. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Sedge is still growing. Miracles are still growing. They're still in the making. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I believe there's some folks that's wanting to pray just a moment, that's wanting to talk to the Lord for a moment. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Be encouraged in the Lord tonight. Be encouraged in the Lord tonight. God's got this. God's got it. God's got it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Receive it tonight, Lord. I receive your strength tonight, Lord. I receive your help tonight, Lord. My confidence is in you tonight, God. My confidence is in you tonight. Hallelujah. the presence of the Lord in the house tonight. He never promised the cross would not get heavy, the hill would not be hard to climb. Anybody believe it? He never offered the victory without fighting, but he said help would always come in time. 
Just remember when you're standing in the valley of decision and the adversary says, give in. Just hold on. Our Lord will show up and he will take you through the fire again. I know within myself that I would surely perish. But if I trust the hand of God, he'll shield the flame again. He never promised that the cross would not get heavy, that you would not be. I just feel like we're taking, we're not shouting and dancing and running, but we're taking pause by the place where sad grows. Realizing that God's not out of miracles. God's not out of making a way. He's still working. Amen. God bless you tonight. Respect those that are praying, as long as they're up here praying. Thank you for being a part of Wednesday night Bible study. I love you, and I'm praying for you, and I believe God's going to walk with you and talk with you and help you. The days to come are going to be better than the days that were you just came out of. God's going to do some great things. Anybody believe that? Anybody believe that? I've never seen a Red Sea part open up. That's all right, Moses. Just trust me, buddy. I'm fixing to do something bad to the bone. I really feel like God's getting ready to do something awesome for somebody if you'll just believe it. In other words, it was smaller back then. It was big to you, but God's getting ready to do something that's going to affect everybody around you. Be willing to be led by God and trust the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your word again tonight, God. Thank you for these good people. Give them traveling mercies on their way home. Strengthen their bodies. Give them rest for work tomorrow. Honor their sacrifice tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You're dismissing the fear of the Lord.